Jackers! So today we are doing our in-depth discussion of Carry On by Rainbow Rowell. Now, if you watched our last video, you may have seen at the end that we picked out the next book we were going to read and it's The Daughter of the Pirate King. This is clearly not that. But we're reading that currently and this one we just happened to finish first. So we thought, let's do a discussion about it rather than you wait for another video. So, because you'll be waiting. Also, another thing we're going to try out this year is we're not going to do the picking out of the hat on camera just because a lot of the time we won't get the chance to film for ages and so then we can't really read anything if we don't have the book so we're gonna do it off camera but we might post it on our instagram or something like that so you know follow us getting the books is also like a thing that takes ages sometimes yeah. like sometimes we have to order it online because yes. dimix doesn't have it or whatever so this is a book about a boy called simon mostly and he's the chosen one of the magical wizarding world that may or may not remind you a little bit of harry potter a lot of the dynamics between the characters is pretty similar but she makes a great distinction in the way the magic works so what were your first impressions on it so obviously you got the Harry Potter thing but what else did you like or dislike immediately when you first <sighs> kind of I mean immediately it's obviously like a young adult romance I enjoyed it it was really whimsical I guess mm. like <clears throat> most of the way through it because he's talking about how every time he says like a magic spell it's always something like really weird yeah because <laughs> it's just like a popular saying or something and then it got to the point where he was in the cab and he cut the goblin's head off it got <clears throat> gruesome really quickly yeah it, it was kind of very unexpected because the tone was so light it felt on the younger end of younger adults you know yeah. like like it's very simple kind of ideas yeah. very very like nice characters they kind of each had a distinct personality trait, but that was sort of it. And it was like, that was really nice. Like it kind of fit in the world, but then just randomly a gruesome thing like that would happen. You're like, whoa. Throughout the whole book, anytime something like weird happened, I was like, oh. Just because it was so like weirdly whimsical. Yeah, it was like gruesome, but staying in that kind of young theme. And I was like, what? Like his comments afterwards were always very much like, Ah, oh, shucks. And you were like, what? It was just kind of like weird to read. I, I think I enjoyed how she set out the world yeah. and everything. I really liked how she was like, popular phrases um, are like how they stay popular. They're what give the words magic. Yeah. And I thought that was pretty interesting. Yeah. Like, I like how she did that. Yeah. And if you didn't know, Carry On is like from Fangirl. So in Fangirl, it's like about a girl and she writes fan fiction about Carry On. And so I think it's really cool that like this is a story that's come out of that. And if you've read Fangirl, it's like quite different, but it sort of has that same feel of like easiness to read. Like it's just one of those books that isn't difficult to keep going. You can kind of just enjoy. Yeah. Because the writing's easy, but it's not like talking down to you, if that makes sense. I also liked all the cliches. I thought they were great. I was living for it. It made the book kind of predictable. Like, as it mm. went, I was like, oh, this, there was one thing that I didn't guess. I think it was Ebb. Just before it came up to it, I was sort of like, oh. Yeah. But I didn't actually guess before that. Like, the whole time I was like, the mage is the bad dude, obviously. Whatever. Yeah. Obviously he is. I hate him. But I was like, I get an ominous feeling, but I'm like, maybe it's just because he's, you know, emo. No, <laughs> the, I, I got that the mage was the bad guy. I got that Lucy was Simon's mom. And the, when he heard like, oh, my rosebud boy, and he thought it was Baz's mom, I was like, no, that's your mom. Don't I mean, I thought it was whatever. Baz's mom. The tone was like completely different when Baz's mom was there compared to like, I'm very my rosebud boy. I just over my head. Whenever Simon missed something and everyone's like, how did you not? I was like, same. It depends on what you pay attention to mm. in books like this. I usually work things out. And do you think it was more plot based or character driven? It was definitely more plot, ba plot based. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it was based in like their last year. Yeah. And so they'd already had their character development like done. They didn't yeah. really develop as characters. I mean, Simon kind of did. It was like very, it was very small development, you know? Yeah. Pl like they had little flashbacks to like other years. I mean, kind of flashbacks. He just sort of like spoke about like, hey, yeah. this happened this year. And I was like, what the f he was like, yeah, I killed a dragon when I was 11. I don't yeah, think no. it meant to hurt me, though. And I was like, <gasps> I was like I'm was like, i so sad now. And it's funny because it, it almost feels like it kind of felt like you'd grown up with this book because of the way it kept talking kind of very nostalgically. Mm. And so it was very much like it could sort of felt like you'd been reading this series and it was like bringing up all these things. And I was like, why do I feel nostalgic about this? I've never read this before. But I think it was just because of like they would reminisce themselves and there was joy in that. It made it feel like this series had a lot more to it, even though it didn't 
you know, have the scenes with the dragon fights from when he was 11. Like, it, but you could imagine just because of the characters. I think as well, Simon's character was like a doer. He's like, we can't think about this. We have to just do it. In regards to his character, it makes sense. Because yeah. like throughout this book, he was sort of um, worried because the major wasn't speaking to him as much. And yeah. he was like, somebody just tell me what to do. Daddy because, issues. oh, for sure, obviously. <laughs> but like throughout the whole book, he was like, somebody just tell me what to do. Because ever since he was 11, people had been telling him what to do. Yeah. And I was so like, he was I really reliant. He wasn't quite independent. I felt so bad for yeah. him. And when like, he kept getting sent away, and he was saying how he kept getting sent away at the end, I was like, Bobby. Yeah, like every time he got sent to like a different uh, orphanage or whatever, and I was like... So what other feelings did it evoke? Because obviously you kind of have that like sympathy and empathy for Simon, but at the same time you're like, oh my god, stop doing dumb shit and we'll be good. We'll be right. Every time it got to one of Baz's perspectives, perspectives yeah. I was like, this is going to be good. And maybe like, I mean, I was like sitting there smiling when he's like, and I'm in love with him. I was like, yes, give me the angsty love. And then he would be like, you're so stupid, Simon. Because I love to be fair, the bits in Simon's point of view where he literally just talked about how great looking Baz was, I was like, Child. like how dare he? And I was like, you love him. <laughs> I was like, how have you not noticed that you're attracted to him at yeah. least? Oh, and how did you react with Agatha? I didn't know how to feel about her yeah. throughout like a lot of it. Because I was kind of like, I see what your point of view is and I see what kind of I was position like, you're in. Like, this is like really reasonable. Like, I can't dislike you for your choices because like, fair. Yeah, it's fair. But, but I was like, but also like, don't go after his best friend or, or enemy or whatever it was. I was like, don't <laughs> enemy, yeah. Don't maybe wait until you've broken yeah. up officially. I I didn't like that, and that she kept lying to him. I appreciate that she thought she was doing it because she wanted to like be there for him and like help him and everything. Mm, mm. But like, like yeah, it, it wasn't the right way to go about it. Yeah. And it was sort of, it, it just kind of made you feel like a bit gross because it felt like she was sneaking around. It was like almost on the verge of cheating. Yeah, because she was technically like emotionally kind of cheating. Yeah, and I was like, no, don't do that. Both of them, I was like, just break up with each other. You clearly like are past this point, but it was interesting to have that relationship that's like clearly done and has served its purpose in the characters' lives, but neither of them were kind of willing to let go because that's all they knew. Yeah, Simon was just like, but this is what's supposed to happen. Like, I'm supposed to, like, finish this and then I'll be happy and it'll be great. Yeah. So he clung onto it as, like, a bit of hope for, like, mm. that, like, if he didn't die, there'd be something, like, good on the end. Yeah. Um, so, like, I get that. Yeah. Well, it's, like, another thing that I loved um, when him and Baz finally got together was like they were lying down and Baz was like, so are, so are you gay now? And he's like, I don't know, I'll work that out later. I got more pressing things on my mind. I was like, and maybe. He's like, I, I'm just gonna enjoy myself. I was like, good on ya. He's like, kissing you was good, kissing Agatha was good. I'll think about it later. I don't think he had like much time to think about it. Nah. And it just, it just seems like he constantly had all these opinions thrown at him. And it's like, like with Penny, I really like Penny, but it also felt like Penny sometimes needed to let Simon have a moment to himself or, like, think about stuff to himself. Like, yeah. when he finally, like, didn't include Penny on something for a, for a moment and, like, was just doing it with Baz, it was, like, he suddenly had his own opinions for stuff rather than constantly being, like, oh, Penny will know. Like, defaulting to Penny, I yeah. think. Because he, he knew what he could do, I think. Like, he, he had the abilities within him. It was more just, like, he didn't have the confidence to bring him forward because he was, like, no, other people will know better. And it was good as soon as, like, Baz was there kind of being like, I mean, Penny will probably know, but I guess we'll take your ideas for now. The bit where they, like, first started, like, working together, they were like, so what do we do? And someone was like, Penny gets, like, a whiteboard out. <laughs> <laughs> were you surprised by any of, like, the reveals? I mean, a lot of them were too predictable, but I was still shocked. And you worked them out faster than me because she would message me as she was reading. And I was like, how do you already work that out? It took me, like, a page before it happened to be like... Oh, oh, I get it. To be fair, I did do the like page before it happened about um the Nico, because yeah. working out no, well not like a page. Yeah, like he started talking to Eb, and I was like, she's talking about a brother. Oh, okay, mm. that's Nico. Because mm. <laughs> I was like, why else would it be brought up? Yeah, like it's important, obviously. It's the Nico guy, and then she said his name was Nicodemus. Like what? Uh, no, yeah, Nico, and then she said like his full name, and I was like. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Yeah. There we go. Oh my god, and just like the death that happened when Eb died, I was like, 
What? I, I was just, not expecting that. I didn't expect Em to die. And I dislike greatly that that happened. She <laughs> just wanted to be a happy little lesbian with her goats. Okay. I was so happy because she was just like suddenly like coming out and showing how powerful she was. Right? And Demetra was just being a dick. And I was like, no, couldn't she like stay alive and just distract? I mean, that was the thing about this book is like, because of the way it was written, you were like, and how it was so easy to read, you were like expecting everything to be nice and tied up neatly in the end. But ha stuff happened, and it made me upset. I didn't expect Eb to die. Yeah, and the little bits we had with her, like um, perspective, like as yes, yeah. the fight was going on, I was like, how dare you yeah. do this to me? And I, I loved, um, I liked the whole story of Baz becoming a vampire, and how it was really sad that like mm. his mom had tried like fighting them off. And then he was now suddenly this vampire. And it was interesting how they made that work as well. I thought that was cool. And Simon's wings. I didn't like that. That made me so weirded out. Especially when he had his tail. The tail. <laughs> and he was yeah. wrapping it around Paz's leg. And I was like, I mean, like, cute, but kind of makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> That's the thing I was, like, least happy about. No one addressed it! Like, when he had them still going to the fight, I was like, yeah, okay, useful. And then after the fight, I was like, cool, his magic is gone, the wings will disappear, right? And then they didn't. Well, like, I thought, I thought, like, he was gonna injure himself or something, and, and when it was like, he's lost his powers, I thought on the next page, they'd be like, and then one day, he said, he said, gosh darn it, and, like, something happened. And I was gonna be like, oh, magic. But then no. he just kept his wings and weird tail, which, I don't know if that's a fair trade. The bit where the, um... The humdrum ended up being Simon. Mm. Wasn't super surprised. And, like, I, I kind of, like, worked it out as it went. Yeah. Um, when Because when they started talking about how much power he was using and how the humdrum was, like, creating holes, I was like, oh, so he's using up the power I didn't from, get like, the magical world and the humdrum's, like, a bit of him. I did get that. I was just like, how is he ever going to fight him? And then I, I um... Yeah. And he was like, wait, what date did you start doing that? I was like... Damn it, Simon's the one who's doing this. Yeah. I thought the humdrum was just being a dick and taking Simon's form. No. <laughs> it's like lol Sam. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, the bit where he, they were like, oh no, holes want to like get bigger. Um, but yeah. he was like, holes want to be filled. And they were like, nah, that's not it. And I was like, that's totally it. And then he hugged it and I was like, oh. Yeah, that was kind of sweet. It was really wholesome. <laughs> I was like, it was a weirdly, really wholesome Because he was like really evil. He's like, Neh. and I just imagined him being like, no, you. And then just <laughs> like, like this little Simon girl like, and then Simon just be like, come here, buddy. He's like, no! That's just how I imagined the scene. I did expect the holes to like fill back up again, but the fact that they like were still there, they just weren't getting any bigger or anything, I thought was pretty cool. Yeah. Like, yeah, there was still like lasting effects from it. It was like the ozone layer. Yeah. I reckon. Probably. Hashtag reference. You damage it, it stays. Ozone Although the ozone's itself? like kind of fixing itself. <laughs> yeah, I was about to be like, but you kind of have to like not do anything for a while, and it's still there. It is still there. Same. What was your favorite part? I liked when Simon showed up at Baz's house and he was so happy. <laughs> he was like, what are you doing here? And Simon's like, I'm here for Christmas. And he's like covered in snow. And Baz is like, why are you so dramatic? I love you, come here. <laughs> I was like, yeah. <laughs> My favorite bit was when the humdrum took Baz, right? And Simon went after them. And then there was the fire. And it was really dramatic. And then they started making out, and I was like, this is adorable. Yeah. I was like, continue this, please. I think the bit that I disliked the most was probably when, like, Agatha was waiting for Baz on the bridge. And she was like, I'm just gonna wait here, and maybe he'll see me. And I, oh. and I was sort of like, girl. Yeah. That, that's probably when I liked her the least. I was like, that's stupid, for one. Yeah, and then <laughs> Simon showed up and was like, uh, what are you doing here? And both of them were both like, we're not here to see Baz. And then she dropped the handkerchief and Baz was like, because Baz didn't know about it, right? Yeah. So it's like, did she just pick that up from somewhere? And this whole time he's been like, where the f*** is this handkerchief? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. yeah. I get that. I, I appreciated how she had her own issues and she did still go to try and help. Like she thought she was helping. Yeah. Um, even though she was scared and she was like, no, I'm not going to run away this time. Yeah. Um, I appreciate that she really didn't want to stay like in the magical world. She was like, I'm just going to go to university. Yeah. I don't want to like do any of that. Yeah, and, and how at like, the end you find out that she's done that. And I'm like, good on you. I was like, I mean, fair enough. Mm. That's like, you can't really fault her for that. And yeah. when she kept running away from the fight, um, I was like, I mean, I don't like that you did that, but also fair enough. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, I mean, honestly, probably would too. That's scary. That's, that's. 
I mean, I might not, because... Yeah, but you're a Gryffindor, so we don't... I'm a Slytherin. <laughs> <laughs> but something's going on, right? Don't you want to, like, know? Sometimes. I think I'd, like, run there just, like, out of sheer curiosity. <laughs> and who is your favourite character? Uh, I'd probably say Penelope. Yeah. I liked Penelope. She was, she was really... Fun. She really just wanted Simon to be left alone. And every time she suggested they run away, I was like, please. She was like Hermione mixed with Ron. Yeah. yeah. She was like the best combination of the two. Yeah, it's great. Because she was like, I will protect you, but also I'm going to be smart and we should run. Although my one gripe with her, when she was like, I can only have three friends. I only have time for three. I was like... Yeah, no, but then the number got bigger <laughs> later on. I, I was know, like, like, nice. <laughs> she's like, I have to like, back. Like, <laughs> you zoom in on her head, she's smiling, waving. And her head, she's like, gotta cut some friends. My favourite character was probably Simon, just because I related. Because I read him and I was like, oh, like, can't be that silly and you can't like be that gullible. And then I was like, but who am I? <laughs> so I was like, I like Simon, but I also, I loved Bez when he was lovesick over Simon. So That's true. Those that made me really happy to read. I was like, oh. Those bits where you knew he was like looking at Simon to like check if he was jealous because he was looking at Agatha. Agatha. Yeah. I was like, yes. He was like, yes, yes. Yeah. And he was like, he was like, there's no chance because he's with Agatha. So, you know, there's no other possibility that he can like more than one gender. But, you know, I guess I'll just be gay here by myself. <laughs> and he's and homosexual. <laughs> and instead he was just like, I will annoy him. <laughs> to my dying breath. <laughs> the roommates trope. Like, as soon as it came up, they were roommates. I was like, oh, they were roommates. Amazing. Who would you trip. recommend this to? Probably people who liked Harry Potter, but didn't like that he, um, it was, like, not gay. Yeah. What would you rate this? Like, four out of five. Yeah. I, I get four out of five as well. I really enjoy this book. There's nothing really wrong with it. I think it, the only reason I'm giving it four out of five instead of a five out of five is because it just felt a bit young for me, and so I didn't enjoy it as much as, like, yeah. A five star book that I would I like I liked how it was like vaguely unsettling to read, like how it was just like weirdly serious while being so strange at yeah. the same time. And the characters were all fun. And I, I like, liked yeah. the world that she built it in. I yeah. thought that was really cool. Like and it was a satisfying end as well. Yeah, that's true. So like you kinda left the book being like, you know, maybe they could do a second one, but also and they are doing a second one. But Love also it. Yeah. Nice. But like it it's also it could be a standalone. So you could finish with this book and be like yeah, I was, I was like, satisfied with that. I was like, if they end that, like, it leaves it open. And I'm like, fair enough. But no, I, I was, like, yeah. happy with how it ended. We've done our spoiler for a review on Carry On as well, so you can watch that as well. Follow our Instagram if you want to keep up to date with what books we're going to be reading and what we're probably going to be discussing next. Um, and yeah, we'll see, we'll see you next time.